Hi, and thanks for joining me. I inadvertently did a teaser at the end of my last video about Boozy and the Sussex Squad, and I actually didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to dangle anything. I was actually just really musing out loud and thinking about what I was going to go on to next. Because it's interesting, this whole exposure of Boozy and the Sussex Squad by the mainstream media has actually raised more questions about a whole lot of things, and also about all the things that the mainstream media aren't addressing and have never addressed, have never asked challenging questions about in regard to Meghan and Harry. Now, I'm referring to the rumours and speculation that have been boiling up for five years about Meghan Markle's pregnancy with Archie. And the rumours just will not go away. The speculation just will not go away. Only yesterday on X, it was trending. It was a trending topic and it was quite a cruel hashtag. I took no part in it, but I can understand why people do take part in it. I can understand why people are frustrated because they're not getting answers. And there's an obvious sense out there that the general public has not been told the full story. Now, in the teaser at the end of the last video, my initial thoughts were that maybe Christopher Boozy was advocating so strongly for us to doubt the media, in particular the Sun newspaper, about the farm video, and also to even doubt the BBC video of Catherine sitting on the bench telling us of her cancer diagnosis, dragging out experts, or so-called experts, his version of experts, um, saying that, you know, it was AI or it was, you know, iffy and He's really doubling down on the fact that you can't trust the palace. You can't trust the royal family. You can't trust them because they're colluding with the media and the media are giving you false information. That is what he's been strongly advocating for in amongst his pile on and nastiness about Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and also Prince William. So I thought, why would he be doing that? What's he trying to do? It's almost like he's trying to soften up the narrative, soften up the public. And I thought, well, if something's coming down the pike that could be conceived to be quite embarrassing to Harry and Meghan or uh, make people doubt them, make people not trust them, make people feel like they've been lied to over the last five years, if something was about to be revealed, something big, would that be the way to soften up the public so that when mainstream media starts to report on this thing, he can point and say, but you can't trust the media. The media makes things up. The media misleads. And also he can point to the fact that, look, the royal family are in cahoots with that media, particularly the UK media, of course. So you can't believe what you're seeing and you can't believe what you're hearing. Then this hashtag that was trending uh, yesterday on X, and I won't repeat it because it's, you know, it's a bit yuck. Um, it alluded to the rumours and speculation about Megan's pregnancy with Archie. And then I thought, hang on, what if Christopher Boozy's right? I know, that just blows my mind. That just makes me want to <laughs> give up right now. But just for the sake of argument, for the sake of being a devil's advocate, just for about a minute or 30 seconds, what if he was right? What if we had been actually deceived by the palace on an issue, even through no fault of their own? What if they were party to something they didn't want to be party to, they couldn't actually divulge it, and they were sort of stuck, stuck between a rock and a hard place, where they couldn't divulge something they wanted to divulge, but it made them party to something they didn't agree with? What if that happened? What if the UK media were not reporting on something? What if there was misinformation out there because there's a legal activity or a super injunction or some sort of impediment to them reporting on a particular story? That would make Christopher Boozy right, that there is misinformation, there is falsehoods being left un. Challenge. Now, as soon as we get into the realms of the rumours and speculation about this pregnancy with Archie, you're obviously going to be accused of being cruel because you're dragging a child into speculation and rumour. The speculation and rumour is already out there. I am not creating it. It is everywhere. And it's not in a small little fringe part of society now. It is literally everywhere. Perfectly sensible professionals 
are even questioning it. I am contacted daily in comment sections, so I can't verify they are nurses, I can't verify they are medical professionals, but I have had enough comments over the last year to convince me that there isn't a nurse out there <laughs> that believes the birth story that was spun in spare or believes a lot of the images that they saw when Megan was pregnant with Archie. And what is interesting is the mainstream media does not pick up on any of this speculation. They do not pick up on any of this rumour other than maybe five years ago, they would sneeringly report on the conspiracy theorists, but there's been nothing really ever since. And everyone used to sneer at people that raised questions about the Sussex Squad and Christopher Boozy too. They were dismissed as conspiracy theorists. And I am as far away from being a conspiracy theorist as you can get. I deal in fact, I deal in research. I deal in legitimate and serious questions. So this is what I posed to Daily Mail UK and Daily Mail Online on X yesterday. I'd like to read it out so you would understand where I'm coming from. At Daily Mail UK at Mail Online. In February 2019, you published an in-depth article about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's visit to Birkenhead. As part of this article, you included a photo gallery with over 90 images. So these were published photos in the public domain. I'm going to link to them down below this video and you can go and view all of them yourself. You would be aware that these images have been a source of much discussion and online speculation over the last five years. These images appear to depict the baby bump changing position. Now this was, I was alerted to this by people that claim to be nurses and medical professionals in the comments of my YouTube channel. In some images, the bump appears to be in a low position and in others, a higher position. Now I wanted to ask this valid question about these images because I have been informed that babies do not shift up and down this way, they can drop just prior to birth, but they don't generally do it in the space of a few hour visit, you know, to Birkenhead. All right. Also, several images appear to show the bump's flattened appearance and in others, apparent re-rounding. Finally, when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were leaving, many have observed a strange shape apparently under the bump. Now there's just a slight something under the bump in one photo as she's coming out of a doorway. As the, and these are published photos. These are photos that you can see that are published in the public domain. Getty Images have verified them. They are on their website. I presume Daily Mail paid for the licensing to use these photos. I don't know, but Daily Mail UK published them with this original article. As the publisher of this article and said images, are you able to provide any explanation or advice to clarify this situation? It is assumed that you would only publish verified unaltered images. Now we've all been told the importance of verified unaltered images. We were, it was slammed down our throats with the whole Catherine saga. So what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Are the journalists that attended on that day, well, that doesn't really make sense, does it? <laughs> that was the wrong cliche to use. So just scratch that. <laughs> I'm not going to edit it out. You can see that I am flawed like everybody. Are the journalists that attended on that day able to provide any plausible explanation? Any help in this regard would be appreciated. And I'm sure it is in the interests of all parties to end all speculation and rumour. Thank you. Now that is what I sent off via X to Daily Mail UK and Daily Mail Online. I'm also going to email Angela Levin. I'm also going to contact her on X because she was there that day. She wrote about it in her book about Harry. She wrote about the Birkenhead visit. Also, I'm going to reach out to Valentine Lowe because I believe he was also there that day. I believe he was the one who originally wrote the original article for the Royal Rota about Megan letting it slip about the baby's birth date or possible birth date. 
So if I hear back from any of these news organizations or any of these journalists, I of course will make another video and let you know. Until that point, I won't be making any more videos. I'm not trying to fuel nasty rumor and speculation. I'm trying to put an end to a five-year rumor and speculation. And I think that that honestly is in the interests of Meghan Markle, of Prince Harry, of their children, and of the general public that has been extremely frustrated that no hard questions have ever been asked, no serious questions have never been asked. Even in the interviews for Prince Harry's book, Spare, he was never questioned about the birth story. And the birth story in that memoir was beyond ludicrous. So I'm going to put some images up now. I'm going to actually run a little film just probably down in the left-hand corner or the right-hand corner. And that is just to prove to you that I visited the dailymail.uk.com come whatever site and viewed this photo gallery and I took a little sort of screen film of me flicking through the photos so you could see where I sourced them and what I was doing. Then now I'm going to put up a screenshot of a side-by-side -side comparison of two photographs that I actually took from the Daily Mail published photos from their photo gallery. Now, I made a further tweet um, after that tweet, and um, I actually numbered some of the photos so people could go and check it out for themselves, and I linked to the Daily Mail article. Now, I did that in good faith, and before I made this video, I went back to just go to those specific photos. They were photo number 40, photo number 70, and photo number 86 out of 92. Well, now it's showing that there's only 91 images. And when I go to check those particular photographs that I highlighted in this next tweet I'm going to read out, it doesn't match up <laughs> with what I wanted to show you. And I'm really, really frustrated with myself that I didn't take screenshots before I posted this tweet. It was the height of stupidity. However, I did take some screenshots, luckily, and that's how I could create the side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the tweet where I actually stupidly <laughs> gave away the cards I held, which were actual numbered photograph. Yesterday on this platform, this topic was trending again with a cruel hashtag. I was not part of that thread. Now I made that clear because I wanted them to realize that I'm not piling on Meghan Markle. I'm not piling on Prince Harry. I'm purely asking sensible, serious questions, seeking answers. Um, Within this Daily Mail UK photo gallery, I can see a change in position from image 40 out of 92, but now there's only 91, to image 70 out of 92 and 86 out of 92. Now, frustratingly, all those don't match up with what I wanted to show you. I'm aware I may be wrong, and I may be wrong. So I sought polite clarification from the publishers of the article, which was the Daily Mail UK. It is in the interests of all concerned parties to end rumour and speculation that can only result from seeking facts. I am not fueling rumours. I am aiming to clarify with direct and serious questions. And look, honestly, if it came about that there was some sort of um, covering over Meghan's real pregnancy. And that has been suggested by people. Some people have said that she may have had some padding to make herself look a little more elegant in her dress. Some people, so for cosmetic reasons, Hollywood stars do it all the time. Also, some people have suggested she may have felt an extra level of protection if she had sort of a padded, padded protection over her pregnancy because she was having to go out amongst crowds and amongst people and because she had received apparently um, awful things online, uh, she may have felt vulnerable and she may have felt paranoid and she may have want, wished to just sort of pad her baby or protect it in that way. And that might have been what we saw uh, apparently appearing to change position. There could be all sorts of really clear, verifiable, you know, sensible reasons why this is occurring and why the speculation is occurring. So why they don't just address it and clear it up, I don't know. I just don't know. 
Then there is the other rumour and speculation. It's because it was a surrogate birth, that Archie was a surrogate birth. Now, there's no shame in having a surrogate birth. Why would anyone pretend? Now, it does affect evidently the line of succession. Surrogate births can affect the line of succession and the qualification for that line of succession. But in all honesty, if anything ever happened, to Prince William and Princess Catherine, and heaven forbid it won't, touch wood, touch wood, this is bamboo, touch bamboo, <laughs> um, or any of their children, none of us, of course, would want anything like that to happen. Yuck, don't even want to think about it. But if anything like that ever did happen in the future, well, then the chances of Harry and Meghan flying back to the UK and taking up their position as the new king and queen is zilch. Because the people of the UK would not countenance that. The people of any Commonwealth country would not countenance that. It would be over. That would be the end of the monarchy. End of. So the line of succession argument is silly anyway. It's all over, Red Rover, anyway. Um, so there's that. Now, I am going to read out the birth story, sections of the birth story verbatim from Spare because I am contacted constantly about them. Now, I have shown you my doubts about the photographs that are out in the public domain. You can tell me what you think and comment down below. Please be aware that I'm not trying to turn my channel into a pile-on channel. So if you can contribute to the debate in a thoughtful way, I really, really, really appreciate that. Now, I have checked the timeline of the pregnancy. Now, we were informed that she told the family privately on the 12th of October 2018, which was Eugenie's wedding. And that was, you know, really bad taste. She shouldn't have done it. And it's very rude, but that just shows a lack of class and lack of education, but we'll move on. So she told the family at someone else's wedding. And I'm assuming that that was the 12 week mark. Now in Harry's memoir spare, which is a source of great fact and a really reliable source of information, I say, dripping with sarcasm, he said that the birth was a week late. So, okay, Archie was born around the 41st week. Uh, okay, so the timeline works out from 12th of October 2018 to Archie's birth in 2019, May 6th, I think it was, 2019. It works out, checks out. It's 41 weeks. Where the timeline is a little iffy but nothing really prominently exciting is Birkenhead because around Birkenhead, therefore, she would have been around the 30-week mark. Now, officially, in medical terms, the 30-week mark is seven months pregnant. Now, that would explain, explain why she looked unnecessarily huge for a six-month. <laughs> but every woman's different. Every one woman's different. But she seemed rather large for a six-month pregnancy, and she told everyone she was six months pregnant at Birkenhead but she was more around 29, 30 weeks, which is getting into the start of the seventh month. So that's where it slightly doesn't add up. But then again, it's not really worth quibbling over. I mean, any pregnant woman could say, oh, I'm six months when she's in her six month or even at the end of her six month. So I don't think that's really worth quibbling over. I don't think I discovered anything exciting there. Now let's get into what Harry actually said just to finish up this video. When Meg was a week past her due date, the comms team in the palace began pressuring me, when's the baby coming? The press can't wait forever, you know. So we know she was a week past her due date. So I'm saying, okay, 41 weeks. It's because most pregnancies are around the 40 week mark. Our do so they get to Portland Hospital. Our doctor walked in, talked through everything with us and said it was time to induce. Now I have been induced. So I know what that's like. I've had a water birth and I've had a birth, my first birth, induced. So I know exactly the procedure. I know exactly how much it hurts because when you're induced, it really, you know, is unnatural and it causes really harsh contractions, really harsh contractions. And I haven't heard of one woman that's been induced where that wasn't the case. I mean, when I just talk to women, that's, they're in agreement with me. Okay. I saw two ways of enhancing my calm. Nando's chicken brought by their bodyguards and two, a canister of laughing gas beside Meg's bed. I took several slow penetrating hits. Meg was bouncing on a giant purple ball, a proven way of giving nature a push. Now, even if she was induced, she could still be bouncing on a ball because when I was first induced, I was walking around the hospital grounds. 
I was allowed to walk around the hospital grounds. I hadn't had an epidural yet. I hadn't had anything like that, but I was induced. I had received the, it's like a gel they use in Australia, okay? And I was walking around and told to sort of try to encourage contractions to start. And that's what she would be doing, bouncing on the giant purple ball. Okay, when her contractions began to quicken and deepen, which happens, a nurse came and tried to give her some laughing gas. There was none left. So Harry is implying that he had the whole canister of laughing gas. Now, I have heard from several nurses who say, one, Portland Hospital does not have canisters of laughing gas. The laughing gas or the gas or the, the, the gas you use to relieve pain in pregnancy, the pain of contractions, is in the wall and it is strictly metered and it is strictly administered via medical supervision. So there's no way that Harry would have been able to get whiffs of this gas, they don't think. They call that into question, what he's saying there. Okay. The nurse looked at the tank, looked at me and could see the thought slowly dawning. Gracious, the husband's had it all. Sorry, I said meekly. Well, look, really in any hospital, Prince Harry or not, that would be enough to get the husband chucked out because that's interfering with medical equipment and it's interfering. And also it's bloody dangerous. It's really, really dangerous. So more would have happened from that. Meg laughed. The nurse had to laugh and quickly changed the canister. Well, poor nurse. It makes me doubt that they were really in the Portland Hospital because, like I said, I have heard that in Portland Hospital there are not canisters. I have heard that in a surrogacy hospital clinic that is sort of attached to the Portland Hospital, that is now officially attached to the Portland Hospital, but at that point wasn't, that it could be conceivable because it's a small private hospital that there could be canisters. Now, that's just what I've heard. Again, it could be incorrect. I'm raising the questions. I want the answers. I want the answers. She was in so much pain at this point. I can sympathize. I know what that's like. She needed an epidural. And the anesthetist hurried in, sorry, <laughs> And off he went. He gave her an injection in the base of her spine. I'm still quoting from Spare. Still, the pain didn't let up. So she's had an epidural. It didn't take. He probably put it in the wrong spot. The medicine apparently wasn't getting where it needed to go. He came back and did it again. So not only did she have an epidural, she had a second epidural. So they call that a top-up, all right? A top-up. So she's got that amount in her system. Things quietened down but accelerated at the same time. So she can no longer feel the pain, but, you know, the contractions are still going ahead and the baby's still trying to, you know, come out. I remember, now I'll skip now to after the birth of Archie because I'm not going to go through the birth story. Um, I'm not going to put you through it. <laughs> but this, after the birth. I remember watching the nurses run tests on my hour old son and then we were out of there, into the lift, into the underground car park, into the people carrier and gone. Within two hours of our son being born, we were back at Frogmore. Within two hours of being induced, within two hours of receiving an epidural, then a second epidural, top up, now, she may have been wheeled into the lift. She may have been wheeled to the car. She may have been helped into the car. She may have been wheeled into Frogmore Cottage. But I still can't see any responsible hospital releasing a patient that has been induced and gave birth two hours before. Portland Hospital, are you able to answer those questions? Are you able to actually say, is that what happened? Because surely it would come down to actually protecting your uh, reputation as a responsible health facility because I just haven't heard of anybody allowing a patient to leave two hours after being induced and two hours after giving birth. I mean, you've even got to wait and check that there isn't any excess bleeding that's going to come down the pike unless she had a whole full medical team at Frogmore Cottage, but that was never suggested or mentioned. So that is why there has been five years 
of rumour and speculation. And again, I do not raise these questions to pile on Meghan Markle, but it is the height of hypocrisy to question Catherine, the Princess of Wales, Mother's Day photo, and then question her brave statement videoed by the BBC to announce her cancer diagnosis to the level that Christopher Boozy and the Sussex Squad have done all over X, all over social media, and encouraged by and, and amplified by USA tabloids and by extension the UK tabloids. They all made sure all that flew as far and wide globally. It is the height of hypocrisy that all that can take place Yet we can't ask these very real questions in a serious and polite way and request answers. I look forward to seeing you tonight for a Gossip Before Bed. Very lighthearted tonight. We're just going to have some fun because I've been doing some very serious videos and I'm after some light relief too. See you all then. Bye. Bye.